Hi everybody, I'm Kara. Welcome back to Glazing with Amico. And today I'm going to talk about how to glaze spoons, uh, jewelry like pendants, and other items like ornaments that generally get glazed on all sides and that you might want to have glazed on all sides. And I'm going to talk about some different methods for how to glaze things like that. Um, because, of course, they have to sit on something to be fired. So uh, last week, I did the sprinkle glazing with celadons, and I have a, the plate came out of the kiln, and here it is. came out pretty good. Let me go back. So you can see the color really nicely. Uh, I think if I was to do this again, which I'm probably going to do again, I'm going to experiment with some different background colors instead of snow. And I'm also going to experiment with using smaller glaze chips. So if you hadn't seen that video that is on our YouTube under the live videos for special effects. So... Let me see. Yeah, I thought that came out really well. Sorry, I'm using some different uh, methods for seeing my, my comments today. We'll see how this goes. Uh, hi, Sherry. Hi, Rebecca. And uh, Mardi Gras. Yeah, it does, it does have a Mardi Gras look to it, doesn't it? It is, it is very playful, uh, like confetti. So um, I'm... I, Think that was a lot of fun definitely going to do that again so today i'm going to hang on a moment i'm going to uh be glazing spoons so this is a spoon that i glazed and my preferred method for glazing things like this where i want them to be glazed on all sides is to use stilts so for this i used this kind of stilt. These kind of stilts um, have lots of little teeth, but it's great for holding up something like this. And I balanced it so that it would, uh, the spoon part was not where the spikes were. That way it would, uh, uh, could, you could actually put it in your mouth and it would be smooth on all sides of the spoon because I didn't want to have the rough bits where the where the uh, oh, sorry the rough bits where the uh, uh, spikes of the stilt kind of cut into it now what I do to make sure that I'm not getting any uh, marks is I use this. It is a tool made by uh, Kemper, and it looks, it always looks to me like a, a piece of jicama, uh, but it is like a sanding stick. It is a little brick of material. I've already sanded these off, and they're, they're, they make little lumps because the glaze ran a little bit, but at least they're not they're not going to bite you. They're not sharp. And you just use it like sandpaper. Sorry about the sound. Now, if you don't want to have marks from stilts, as I did with this, there are other options. So Can one I still not seeing anything on the Facebook pages. Uh it's on. So um, another option, these are rattles, and uh, they were underglazed on all sides, but to 
be able to set them down, there is a small circle of unglazed area. Now, there are things like maybe you're making Christmas ornaments and you don't want to have an unglazed bottom. You can leave the top unglazed. And I'm going to show you. This is a kind of stilt that we use sometimes, and it is for doing Christmas ornaments. And it can balance on there like this so that it is not touching the stilt. We also have smaller stilts. Yeah. Now this one, it, it will actually sit on the spikes, but you have to be careful because the smaller ones will want to fall over. So you have to kind of arrange them in a way where they will not fall over or use a bigger one. Now I want to warn you, for those of you who are using cone 5, 6, or even a cone 10, if you're using stilts, you need to make sure when you purchase them that they are rated for cone 5, 6, or higher. Because a lot of stilts that are used, a lot of these kind of stilts that are used for crafters uh, and low fire are made out of low fire clay. And if you fire them to higher temperatures like cone 5, cone 6, they will completely melt and turn into just a puddle, which negates the point. So this is actually a low fire clay, so it wouldn't matter because it would be low fired. But so it can be balanced on the stilt like so, and then it can be glazed on all sides. It's one of the advantages. So, um, I also have pendants, and I just don't glaze them on the back, but these can also be done with stilts where you arrange them on a stilt. If you want to have a glazed back to them, that works too. Uh, I prefer to just uh, make them really smooth on the back and just not glaze them on the back, but that is another option. Now, the third option that some people like to do and can work great, but you have to be really careful, is to use high temperature wire. And again, you need to make sure that this is rated for the firing temperature that you're using. You only can find this at ceramic supply stores. This is not wire that you would find in a hardware store. So this is high temperature wire, and you can, yeah, you can hang things on high temperature wire for firing. So for a pendant, for example, you can hang it on a wire, and then it can be glazed on all sides. There are two things to keep in mind. One of them is that if you're going to hang things on high temperature wire, whether it be spoons, like I have these bisque spoons that I made, whether it be spoons or pendants, you have to keep all glaze out of the hole because it will stick to the wire. The wire is not magically resistant to glaze, so you need to make sure that there's no glaze on, in that hole whether it's a spoon or a pendant. So that's number one. The second thing to keep in mind is that high temperature wire will still bend with weight. So I have some ways that I get around that. One of them is keeping the length of wire short. So let me go back to a uh, selfie where you can see a little bit of what I'm doing here. So I have two posts, and I can first of all bend my wire to go into the posts. That will help. Second, I can put another post on top, and that weight will help the wire to stay in place. So it, it may bend, it may stretch, but it won't go so far as to touch 
The second thing is make that wire short and don't load up a bunch of stuff. If you have a bunch of things on a wire, like let's say I have two spoons on this wire. What may happen is that as the wire bends in firing, they will join together and meet and then you have two spoons stuck together. So try to do as few items as possible on each wire. So that's another option. So there's one last one that I've done with some things from time to time is just to not glaze them, like I said, with this, not glazing on the bottom. Well, with the spoons, with the spoons, one thing I can do is again, glaze just the part that will contact the mouth and then prop it in a post and just not glaze the other parts. So I have some ancient copper today and I'm going to glaze this so that it will have some unglazed areas on the back and I'll still stilt it, and then it can be, uh, it will have very few, if any, stilt marks. So questions about how to do spoons or jewelry or other things that have, uh, that, that you might want to have glaze on all the surfaces? So I'm just applying ancient copper to this. I'm going to do three coats and, and then I'll fire it at cone six and I'll bring it back in two weeks. In two weeks, I'm going to come back and I'm doing some testing with ancient jasper for getting the best results with Ancient Jasper. Even though Ancient Jasper is a glaze that we have been making for many, many, many years, we do still have questions about how to get the best results with it because it, depending on your clay body, on your uh, firing, like it, it does, it, it looks really different depending on clay body, on firings, uh, uh, final temperature, like the difference between cone five and cone six is, is uh, very interesting. So. It's a very nice red color on the screen, but it's actually in real life darker. Which, the, the glaze? The glaze? The yeah, the uh, the ancient copper is it's yeah it looks like vividly red right now, but um, it's actually kind of a, a deep deeper color, like a russet. So another thing I can do, let me see if I can show how this works. Something else I've done to balance things is sometimes. Uh, have them tilted. Let me see if I can show you this from the front. Can you see that down at the bottom? Oops. So I have it at an angle. Have that at an angle so that you can, uh, it, it makes sure that the spoon part is not does not have to have any spikes underneath it. And as for making spoons, I just get a piece of clay and just one piece of clay and just model them and, uh, and then put a hole if I want to hang them for decorative use. I don't use spoons func for functional things, but I do sometimes uh, 
use them decoratively. So. Um, and the warp, the spoon will not warp. Uh, so the, the spoon is going to sit on these stilts. And just like this spoon, um, it will have some marks where the, where the, the stilt touched the glaze. But I just sand those down. So that they're not sharp. You, you still feel them, but they're not sharp. And, uh, and that's it. This one, the glaze ran a little bit more than I was expecting, so it actually has a, has a bigger lump than I was expecting it to have. Um, it does have stilt marks, but they're not, uh, they're not sharp. They're just soft. And there's no stilt marks underneath, on the bottom of the spoon. So that's what it'll sit on. It'll sit on those, the, the spikes of the stilts. Uh, all of the stilts that we have in our studio are rated to cone six. They go, they probably go to cone 10. And that's one way that we make sure that we don't have any accidents with melting stilts. As I said before, absolutely, if you're going to make stilts, uh, use stilts, you need to, um, uh, you need to make sure that they're rated for, for high temperatures. Uh, I see that there is a question about, um, so Megan asks if the bowl of the spoon will flop over. No, it won't. Uh, the clay that I'm using will not warp, so I don't worry about it. If you're using a clay that's prone to warping at the temperature you're firing to, then you may need to do something a little different for this or make it much more lightweight. Uh, spoon up where you guys can see it. There it is on its spikes, uh, on the little stilts. Uh, Different clays may warp when when fired, so that is a that is a consideration. Robin asks, why not functional? I just don't find ceramic spoons to be terribly functional. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using them, but I always feel like they're awfully fragile. So I use them as decorative things instead of functional things. Uh, it it's not. Uh, it's not any fear of using spoons, ceramic spoons. It's more of a, a functional concern. They, they just, it, maybe I'm just too rough on my stuff that I think that I, I would uh, break it. So that is my method for, for glazing something like this. There's, um, I want to wait for that glaze to dry completely before I put it on the, on the stilts. Let me get a third coat on there. And I'll bring this back in two weeks when I join you guys to talk about ancient Jasper and uh, share some of my test results. So, oh, Kelly says that uh, they use a beautiful ceramic spoon to stir their coffee each morning. That does sound really nice. And uh, and you have a little dish for it. I love that. I just, uh, I guess it's just me. I just worry that I would be really rough. I also have teenagers at home, so that uh, I'm always worried that they're going to break something too. But uh, my biggest concern here was just how do you fire them? So uh, can stilts be used in place of feet on large pieces such as platters? I, I, would, um, I would worry about putting stilts under platters because they could warp and the weight could be an issue. Um, and to do this with triangular stilts, yes, you can. Where's my triangular stilt? Uh, you can do this with a triangular stilt, but it's harder to do with a triangular stilt. But you could do it with two triangular stilts. For example, have one uh, under two stilts on one side and two stilts on the other. But I like these rows of stilts for holding up things that are awkward like spoons. Uh, 
what other comments? Metallic looking underglaze for the unglazed areas. Well, if it was a metallic looking anything, it would not be an underglaze. It would be a glaze because uh, it would have to melt. But you could use an underglaze for the unglazed areas. That would work. And Lynn comments that, that they were surprised I put coats on without drying between coats. Um, well, it was really closer to two coats, but yeah, that was, um, I'm a pretty heavy glazer and, uh, I wasn't worried. If you don't let it dry, sometimes it can crawl. I, I don't have it do that very often. Triangular stilts can be used for a lot of different things, but they're great for, uh, plates and plaques and round things. Um, something like this can be fired on a round stilt, uh, a triangular stilt really easily. We use the triangular stilts for tiles uh, very frequently here uh, because of course they're very easy to have things level. And uh, let's see, have I missed any questions? I think that I've, I've seen most of the questions. So- Arden had a question up there that we had covered earlier. She tuned in late, but maybe we can I think, answer hers later. Um, about warping? Oh, way up top. She asked what the spoon sits on during firing. Oh, I think I did answer that. The spoon sits on stilts. But it can also uh, it can also sit on other things. But uh, stilts is how I fired them. So anyway, um, stain or underglaze stripe around the entire handle tip. Yeah, I can imagine that that would work. You could, um, like I was showing earlier, you can balance a spoon in a. Uh, here we go. You can balance a spoon inside a post. And if you did it this way, you could just glaze to this point and then you stain or underglaze that you know will not flux for the handle, this part of the handle, and then fire it like that, standing up, that would work. Maybe I should do that one way. I'll fire it this way with another glaze. I don't have another glaze with me today, but I will do that with the same time that I fire this, bring them back in two weeks and show you what, uh, show you how it works. Uh, Kelly asks, could a homemade tray out of clay work? Well, you can make your own stilts. This is one of the things about these high wire, high fire wire is you can make a tray and uh, when the clay is still wet, you can cut pieces of the wire to make the stilts. I've made my own uh, stilts for specific projects and it works really well to make your own stilts. You want to make keep the, the spikes relatively short so they don't bend too much, but uh, you can make your own stilts and they can be exactly the size that you need. That would work. I don't know about a tray um, are you make, meaning just a regular tray or, pardon me, a tray for holding, uh, for holding spoons? I'm not sure. So, uh, uh, Maggie, I'll have to talk about your ochre celadon another time because that's, that's way off topic today. And, uh, again... For those of you who tuned in late, here is my sprinkle plate from uh, from last week, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So, if you didn't see that, tune into that. Um, uh, oh, a tray for with a bunch of holes to hold handles. Yes, you could do that. That would work pretty well. Uh, give it a try and let us show us how it goes, because that sounds really interesting. So I will see you guys in two weeks, and um, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you have questions, 
let us know. You can message me at Amico Brent and uh, on Facebook. You can message me on Instagram, uh, also on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, please go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you all next time. Happy glazing.